There we go. Go, Cody. Go. <laughs> You're in the hood. You can kick everyone's ass, man. This was my childhood in the 90s, right? Go risk your life to go save the white girl in the red dress from damn the black guy who looks like me and break trash cans and get turkeys and uh, fight Mexicans with knives, eat sandwiches <laughs> and wear tight jeans like a fucking fag. <laughs> so that's Final Fight Capcom 1990 whatever. Um, pause motherfucker. Pause. Fucking windows. So anyway, yeah, um, that that right there, dude, that's, it's very self-explanatory about how vid video games are instrumental in brainwashing the youth or whatever. There's always like some, why is there always some fucking girl to save? Why is there, that's the objective, you know? It's the, maybe the girl read the rules by Ellen Fine. <laughs> She's captured the heart of Mr. Right, Cody Hagar and Guy. And, uh, <laughs> and she's fucking damned. <laughs> Maybe damned didn't really kidnap her. Maybe damned's the, her, the guy that's actually fucking her and she's using <laughs> Cody and... Ha you have to think about the game and the logic, really, really, you know? If Jessica was really kidnapped in Final Fight, why is she wearing a red dress and red heels? Is that... <laughs> Why is she with this gang of inner city hoodlums and this big dreadlocked guy who she obviously knows <laughs> in that final fight? So anyway, that's, uh, <laughs> that's fucking video games, man. I don't know, boy. But if I could apply all that shit to real life, I'm going to tell you that uh, I'm not here to save no fucking princesses. Sorry, Mario, but our princess is in another castle. <laughs> Save yourself, bitch. Like the girl on the bicycle told me this morning. Fuck you, nigger. <laughs> and she said it kind of like with a little bit of hate and passion in her voice. So I could tell that black guys fuck her too. It's, it's, it's a certain... She just let off that vibe, you know what I'm saying? Pretty weird. Anyway, yeah, man, that's 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 motherfucking shit there. This book, the rules, anyways. This is like, this is like hypergamy, baby. Hypergamy, hypergamy, in all that, in all of its purest nature. I, I will say this too. Um, on the other side, in defense of her and her argument, and also the woman's argument about her per hypergamy, I can understand their logic. I would say that if I was a woman myself, which I am not, but if I were a woman, I do understand the logic, but I'd still much rather feel more secure if I went ahead and uh, procured and secured my own future rather than trying to hijack a man to provide it for me. Like, what the fuck kind of sense does that make? I mean, you know, I, I don't get it. If you're a girl, you can just go and work another additional job or something. Or do other shit. Be a webmaster. Make movies. Be a cam girl. Do something else to sell your time so that you don't have to be dependent or rely upon a man to buy you a Mercedes Benz or a big house or some other shit and whatever. And I'm, I mean, let me go into this, this little, let me zoom this camera out here. Out, out, out. There we go. I can see more of myself on the screen now. Fuck. So, like, anyway. Here's one thing that I will tell about the girl's book here and how, how it, like, following her instructions ended up fucking up not only my life, but also my ex-wife's life. Because once your money runs out, you're kind of fucked, right? So here's what I did, or here's my own little personal, my personal hypergamy story, you know. When I was very young, I got married, and I might have said this a long time ago at age 19 or whatever, but atypically of people my age, I had a lot of money. I had a successful business because I didn't date. I worked, worked, worked like 20 hour fucking days. And literally any business that you pour 20 fucking hours into, it's gonna be successful. I mean, it's not gonna be like some shit where it's like, you'll make money eventually if you're putting all that time into it, most of the time, if you're putting time, money, and effort into it. So. I was living rather frugally below my means like any entrepreneur. I had a $70,000 house. I had about six or seven cars all paid for, mostly race cars and shit. Some were very old, whatever, but uh, I don't believe any of them are worth more than like say 
not more than like twenty thousand dollars or something i mean at the particular time i'm it's like i was basically even though i had money i was like cheap with myself and that's a good thing if you're an entrepreneur right but all this went out the window after getting married you know the wife she wants a mercedes benz new new off the showroom floor fifty thousand dollars you know i've never bought a fifty thousand dollar car even for myself but i'm like oh well, she's my wife whatever whatever i'm gonna do whatever to make her happy because i love her and just how men demonstrate their love and all this shit so I go buy her, in the same day, or the same week or whatever, I buy her this $50,000 Mercedes, and then I, I, my house, I end up getting another one instead of my $70,000 house, which is not good enough, a three bedroom, two bath for a single fucking guy. I get another three bedroom, two bath house with the same number of bedrooms and bathrooms, but with a pool and some other land for like fucking, 200 something thousand or more i don't know what the I think it's worth like 350 thousand or something today last i looked at it or whatever but um my point is like uh why would you i should have cut shit off back then like why would you be with a partner who says what you're doing is not good enough for me or you I, I need you to spend more money on me just because i'm worth it i mean what the fuck they're not thinking about the future 10 20 30 years from now where are they living right now where am i living right now you know what if i still had those assets i don't you know but due, due to following somebody with the men mental and financial maturity of a fucking six-year-old who never had to work all those hours and shit for your houses cars and all these other wonderful things that people enjoy in life traveling and just living you know it's like they don't understand your what I had to put in. So basically for any woman out there that has, I see them in traffic all the time, a woman that has a nice car, you can always tell when a woman has a car that a man bought for her or a car that she didn't purchase for herself. You know what I'm saying? Always, always. So I just make, I just say to myself, man, she's gonna leave that guy. Or for every girl you see driving a Lexus or something like that, or a brand new Benz, this, that, and the other, there's some other guy in a cubicle generally 85 or 90% of the time slaving away for that thing, for that car, house, whatever, to keep her happy. And it's very sad. It's very sad the way that shit works, you know? Because it's not an equal trade. And if a girl cares about you, she won't do that shit. There's nothing wrong with wanting... I wouldn't want a girl to go and buy me a $50,000 car or a $300,000 house. What the fuck? It's just, I wouldn't expect it. It's totally, I would actually find it unacceptable. I'd much rather work for my own shit than to be under someone's, you know, whatever, yoke and control like that. And my thing is I never, I never purchase shit or do things like that for people. I do them just because and I let, let it go. But women, you know, it's like uh, huh, giving, giving shit with strings, you know. My mom's good at this. Most women are good at this. So it's like... The expectations are just fucked and many men get basically put in the fucking dirt in the ground trying to like buy all this shit for girls that supposedly love them but really don't. You know, it's really fucking sad, man. And I was one of those guys. I am that guy. You know, so it is what it is, man. Don't let somebody else abuse you or ride you out like that. If you wouldn't let another man do that to you or treat you like that, don't let another woman do it to you. Just like the girl in the street today where I was just like, get out the road, bitch. You know, after she's like, fuck you, nigger. Or fucking nigger. You know, I can't believe it. I almost, I almost fucking killed the girl with my car today because she drove her bicycle in front of it like a fucking, fucking meth head that's cracked out of her mind. <laughs> you know, fortunately I had the reflexes to hit the brakes and she still hates me. <laughs> yeah. It's the adrenaline, I know. But anyway, yeah, man, that's my story, dude. The fucking, the fucking rules book is a motherfucker. Marriage is a motherfucker. Hypergamy is a motherfucker. Uh, there's, honestly, I don't really think there's much that dudes can do to avoid it. It's the way of the world, really. And if you don't have the experience or training, you're just going to get burned and learn the lesson in life later. Because I could tell myself that if I would have asked my 19 or 20-year-old self, I would not even search for this content at the particular time. How about that? You know, it's like when you're, when you're at the phase in your life where you actually do think that you're smarter than other people because you might have success in some areas where others don't, or you're excelling while everyone else is like down here, you don't want to take advice from people down there because you're like, oh, well, 
the fuck do they know? But it's important to have mentors and shit who are smarter than you. And thanks to YouTube and the internet and whatever, which they didn't have in my age 20 years ago, it's like, you know, there's no YouTube, there was no Google. You know, you, you can't reach out to people and get their experiences. And now you can. So now that the information is out there, you just got to be willing enough to look for it. But I still think a lot of guys aren't going to look for this shit. And they're not going to start playing back other guys' stories and hearing how, hey, this is what I did for the last 20 years because this, this, and this. I don't think they're going to listen, you know. I still want to get married. I still want to have more kids. I still want to have a partner that respects me and cares about me and mutually fucking appreciates me. And until I can have that, I'm just going to remain solo and keep running and working on my shit. You know, there's no need to compromise. Life is too short to have someone that's going to drain and deplete you. You're much, you're much better off, in my case, being alone and totally alone versus being with someone that's going to deplete you and fucking just fucking kill you. I mean, look at your body. If your body's reacting bad to some, being around someone, get rid of them. You know, if you're putting on weight, if you're having problems, if you're... If you have health problems you never had before, if you have just your money's fucked up, your credit's fucking up, and you used to be on top of shit, man, get rid of that bitch. She's the problem, and sh your problems are just going to exponentially grow, 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 and grow, and grow as long as they're, like, fucking attached to you. That's my life lesson there. So, And this goes both ways for men and women. If, you know, toxic people in general, if they're in your fucking family, if it's your own fucking mama, daddy, if it's fucking me, your neighbor, anybody, break it off, man. Or you, or before you're, while you're still able to, or you're going to be fucking dead and fucked up and ass out. That's all there is to it. Break it off or fucking die. That's what I learned. So at some point you're going to realize like you have to respect and value your own life. And, uh, most people aren't going to do that. In a lot of cases, you're going to be the only one that does that. And you'll be solo dolo until you can find somebody else that values you, I guess. Or you could always make compromises yourself and concessions. You know, I'm not saying that people should like hold out for Mr. And Mrs. Perfect and all that shit. But you should definitely, as I'm learning on the Internet, you know, uh, try to work on being the best version of yourself. You know, that's really it. So you got to look in the mirror every day and ask yourself, are you the best possible version of yourself? Have you built a... Uh, 